Hello everyone, Colin Kanat here for Woodwork Web. Today we're going to do some work on this picture frame that I just got finished making a couple days ago. And what we're going to do, today we're going to make something called a rabbiting jig. And what I want to do is I want to put a rabbit in the corner here so it's going to be sort of a wedge shaped thing that's going to go in here. But I want to give the frame a little bit more of an industrial kind of look because uh, this is going to be for a diploma. So stick around and uh, watch how we make this cool rabbiting jig. I have all my pieces cut, there's the two arms, and I've already put a 45 degree cut on those. There's the top for the fence, and the back of the fence, and this of course is going to be my upright. Now I want this to be off the deck of the table saw, so what I'm going to do, I have this piece of veneer that I've got down here that will lift it off, and you can maybe see a little bit of a gap there, that's good. And what I'm going to do now is just mark the back of this so that I know where to put the screws. I'm also going to do the same thing for the back support, so there's the part that fits on the fence obviously, and I'm just going to mark that. And you can see that I've got the veneer on the back here, so that's lifting that up. Now I get the other measurement, and I'll just take that to the drill press, and I'll just drill some pilot holes in there. Now, I'm back working on the upright, and this is the the side that is going to be out, so that will be against the fence. But I'm reversing it and I'm working on the back because it's much better to drill holes through MDF than it is to drill into MDF. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to drill holes through here and through here and the same on the other side. There, I've just drawn where those lines are going to be. I forgot to mention, this is an important line across here because I don't want the table saw blade to come any higher than here because that's where there's going to be screws. So because the wood's <laughs> going to be sliding through the table saw like that, um, I want to make sure that my table saw blade does not exceed that because there's going to be screws up here and I don't want to hit those screws uh, on either side. Okay, so I got that the cross arm clamped on there, and it's in line with the line that I drew, and I'm just going to put a couple of screws in. For this, I'm just using these pan head screws. These are actually Craig screws. I use these a lot. They're really good screws, and I'm just going to use those and drive that through there. Um, I'm going to use this angle iron. This is a, these are available from uh, Lee Valley, <laughs> free plug for Lee Valley there. Uh, but it's a great little right angle clamp. I can clamp that on there and clamp the other one. And now I can get a perfect 90 degree corner by using this clamp. Now the assembly needs to be done on the table saw and I don't know how much you're going to be able to see because I'm going to have my fat hand in here uh, driving screws in there. But see we've got the, the veneer here so it's off the deck and we're going to be driving screws into those pre-drilled holes that we made earlier on. Okay, and there it is. You can see it's lifted up off the deck, so it's riding nice and smoothly. It's on top of the fence, uh, and it doesn't take much effort to move it. That's perfect. The best way these jigs work, or this system works best, is if you cut the blank, first of all, then it's easier to sneak up a, on the cut. To, to, you may have to make a couple or three cuts to get a nice, uh, even cut in there.
Okay, I've changed blades and I've adjusted the height so that it's just a little bit below what my uh, blank is going to be. So I'm all ready to go ahead and make my first cut. Now that made a nice cut, uh, but it's a little bit shallow and I thought it would be because uh, I can, I easily can butt into that. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut all the sides exactly the same. Uh, then I'm going to readjust the fence so that I get a little bit deeper cut. And I'm not going to show you everything uh, because uh, now that you understand the process, um, we'll just, I'll just keep making multiple cuts until I get this. Perfect. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, sand these down so that I get rid of all these threadies. Then I'm going to glue this in place. Well, there's our pieces all nicely glued on there and there the glue is dry. And I'm going to flip them over. There's a couple ways that we can cut these off of here. If you have a pull saw, now this um, wood is unfortunately is quite hard and you can use a pull saw and pull keep pulling that off and cut them off by hand if you want. I'm going to go over to the sliding miter and does a really quick super job and have a look at this. Now the quickest way to cut these off is with a chop saw or a sliding miter. And of course we've got these pieces sticking out here so it's very difficult. You, you can't really line them up here. So here's a little trick. Get yourself a little piece of wood, make sure it's absolutely parallel and it will become your new fence. So you put it up like that against your existing fence and make it sure that it's narrow enough to fit in your frame like that. And all you need to do is slide it down, then butt your blade on the inside as close as you can to the wood and cut it off. There, I've just put some Osmo on that frame to finish it off so you can see the contrast. Really does a dandy job. And that's all because of this little rabbiting, corner rabbiting jig uh, and a great little item to add to your list. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.